and you're very welcome to this week's podcast brought to you by Tipperary Komogi TV. I'm Johnny Canan and I'm delighted to be previewing the FBD Intermediate and Junior B County Finals uh, coming up this weekend with two cracking games in store. On Saturday, it's the Junior B2 County Final between Cashel and Silver Mines. And then on Sunday, we have the Intermediate County Final between Nakavilla, Donaski, Kickhams and Shannon Rovers. Uh, last weekend, Tipperary Komogi held a finals media launch and Tipperary Komogi Piero, Philly Ryan, spoke to Nakavilla Dunaski captain, Bet Ryan and manager Paddy Fitzgerald and got their thoughts ahead of this weekend's showdown. Right, we're all looking forward to next Sunday's County Intermediate Komogi final between Nakavilla and Shannon Rovers. 12 o'clock in the County Komogi grounds in the rag and uh, a big match for both clubs. Shannon Rovers were in it last year, Nakavilla in their, in their first final. Uh, so, I would like to welcome Bet Ryan, the Nakavella captain here, uh, and we'll fire the questions at Bet there straight away. Um, it's on your first year up from Junior A. What was your goal at the start of this year? Um, I suppose our, our goal at the start of the year was was to come to compete, and um, I suppose looking looking at Junior A, like Shannon Rovers had only beat us in the final by a point, and they went up to intermediate and they were into the into the final in their first year as well. So we knew going in. Like you know that we had we had a fair caliber of girls with us and we had a good chance. So our our goal was to compete and and, and to at least get to a semi final this year, which which we did achieve and thankfully now we're through to the final. You've done really really well. Um, are you surprised how well you've done? Uh, you've got to the final unbeaten, so you, you've done fantastic this year. I'm I'm not overly surprised. Like we've three three tip senior girls and an all star nom- nominee on the team, and we've Cleve McCormick. Then she's county minor as well. Like so. Like we've a really good caliber of girls there and girls under age, under sixteen, they're out the county as well, like you know, so like I think people probably underestimated us a little bit, but if you look at the caliber of our players, I'm I'm not surprised at all, no. no. Yeah, yeah, I've seen the underage coming through at winning A titles up long, so yeah, great talent there. Having beaten Killer Wan comfortably in the group stages, was there a small bit of complacency going into the semi final? Um, no, I don't think there was complacency, like we said it before the semi-final the killer one was they were our most uh, physical team that we had met all year and um, their ability like to hunt in hunt in packs and close you down when you had the ball like we knew what we were facing and we knew it was going to be a really physically tough game and um, which it did turn out to be like you know and there was the, there was a lot of freeze in the game like which showed how how physical it was as well but no, I don't think there was complacency. We knew we knew it was going to be a tough, tough battle, like you know, which yeah. it did turn out to be. And you won an extra time. Did yes. you learn a bit from having to go to extra time as a team or whatever, and, and the, the, from the manner of that win? Yes, absolutely. Like I, we kind of felt we started a little bit flat. Mm. So I suppose going forward, like we know we need to be quicker off the mark and and probably like not hold on to the ball as much as we did and give another the other team a chance to close in yeah, and get the ball up the yeah. field as quick as possible like, to go as fast know. as possible yeah. yeah and the fact you beat similarly the fact you beat Shannon Rovers already this year do you think that's going to be an advantage or a disadvantage to you? Sure, I suppose it's probably a disadvantage like everyone knows going into finals like it's always easier going in going in as the underdog like you know and I suppose the fact that we played each other you'd like to think we know you know we both know what what we're facing like yeah you know? so mm. i suppose we're both equally as at an advantage like you know that we both know what we're facing and um look all i can say is hopefully hopefully we'll come out on the right side of it we know we're going it's a tough battle ahead like Shannon rovers as i said junior a two years ago they they beat us by a pint like you know so yeah very close how are you prepared for the final this week and last week then this just well i suppose training as couple of tough training sessions there during the week and uh, you know trying to knock iron out a few injuries and a few knocks here and there like you know um, and just I suppose getting guards right and like I, we've never we've never played in the club in an intermediate final like so it's a massive occasion for the parish like and for the girls that are playing and I suppose just to, to get those girls their heads right and be in a good place like you know and not let the occasion I suppose get to us too much either yeah. like Thanks a million, Beth. That's no fantastic. Matter. Best Thank look you. next week. Thank you very much. Hi, Paddy, manager of uh, Nakavella, facing into the county final 12 o'clock next uh, Sunday in, in the rag. Uh, you had a very close win in the semi final. You needed extra time. Did you take any positives from that team display? Uh, well, as you say, we went extra time and we really took over in extra time. So our fitness levels were proven to be very, very good. Um, 
a lot of the young girls stood up and maybe uh, that that tough decision, that tough, that tough, uh, the, the toughness to get over the semi-final would probably give us, you know, a little bit more experience for the final. Right. Is there anything uh, you think you need to improve uh, uh, for the final and, and, and be Crown County champions? Well, we have to get out of the gates quicker. We were very slow, a very slow start. Um, we grew into the game and we could never really put them away either. So I suppose we have to get out of the gates quicker and we need to be more clinical in front of the posts. Yeah. Now, Cavella had huge success down the years at Juvenile the last couple of years. And uh, what would it mean to the club to be, to be up at senior level? After moving from Junior B, Junior A, up the ranks there so quickly, uh, what would it mean to Look, I, I spoke to the girls last week. I said, look, you're, we'd be painting your pictures on the walls if we, if, we, if we can achieve this. It's just momentous. It's a huge thing to get up to senior. Never happened in the history of the club before. Yeah. You know, so we've never been in an intermediate semi-final or a final before. So I think it's all know, new for know, us. You know adult club uh, six or seven years ago. No, so no adult club. No, no. We had some great success back in the, in the 80s and, mm. and 90s, but for a long time we had no adult club, no. Mm, fantastic, yeah. Have you any injury worries going into the final next week, Paddy? Uh, not really. Um, a few minor knocks. Of course, Rebecca Farrell is a long-term injury. She broke her leg early in the season and yeah. she's been a huge loss. Great corner forward. Yeah. Great corner forward. But, but other than that, we, we, we should be good to go on, on Sunday. How important is Tip Senior player and All-Star nominee, Arena Friday? Look, Arena is a super player. Uh, her, her attitude is absolutely excellent. She drives on all the younger players. Uh, it's not only what she does on the field, but her whole attitude around the, around the team is is just great. Like she's a real ambassador for for the for the game of Camogie, I must say. Yeah, and hopefully Arena will will get the get picked on November twenty sixth at the All Stars uh, banquet. There. Uh, what did you learn from uh, playing Shannon Rovers already this year? Uh, Shannon Rovers, I suppose we've been playing Shannon Rovers since under twelve. Yeah. You know what I mean? And we've kind of as as we've improved, they've improved, and uh, it's very very difficult to continue you know winning against teams so we've played them three times this year and we've won three times and that for me is a worry because you know yeah. they're, they're, they're going to f they're going to turn the key sometime and, and get the victory over they're us learn something, won't and they? hopefully it won't yeah. be in the final yep thanks very much Paddy for coming in today and best luck in the final thanks Billy I'm now delighted to be joined by Boris Lee Antipary senior star Julianne Burke uh, just to preview the FBD insurance intermediate final a bit further Julianne you're very welcome to the podcast Thanks, Julian Geraldine. Um, Julian, no doubt you're disappointed, I suppose, not to be preparing, preparing for a final yourselves. Um, you had a very close semi-final to, with Shannon Rovers, uh, only one point in the, in the end. Um, I suppose the fact you're missing Nicole Walsh and Keish Fitzgerald, were, they were two huge losses. So overall, were you happy enough with your own performance that day? Yeah, Geraldine, we were. Look, I suppose going into the game, you're probably going as underdogs because Shannon Overs had beaten us earlier in the championship, I think by eight or nine points or something. And then I suppose we were dealt the big blow of Mr. Nicole and Katie. And like there were two starting half forwards for us and, and girls you could rely on to score in every game. But I suppose it was up to the rest of us to step up. And we, we knew like we had um, to go 100% at it. And um, look, we worked really hard and I suppose we're lucky we were picked at the end like they got a point to win it um, from a three and um, they go through to the, to the final so fair play to them but look, I suppose there's lots of positives to take from, it, um, from next year as well and just hopefully we can go that step further than next year. Very good and I suppose that was your second time playing Shannon Rovers like you mentioned you, you met in the group stages and uh, met um, obviously uh, in the in the semi-final and I suppose what has impressed you most about the Shannon Rovers team? Yeah like I suppose like they're very calm and confident on the ball like if you even look back to our semi-final we got the goal in the dying minutes and like they didn't panic they believed that they could win it the next puck out they got the ball won it free and put it over the bar like so I suppose like they're a calm they didn't panic and they believed in themselves and I suppose another aspect is like Anya Slattery her puck outs are are unbelievable like she can reach her half forward line with a puck out and like, that's massive in a game of Kogi you can set up scores really really quickly um and then I suppose Jordan like they have a nice blend of players they have experienced players of Ethan Lockney and Sabrina Larkin and then they have a nice few younger girls that have been involved with tip minor teams and tip 16 teams so so they're not afraid to score as well like they're willing to take the ball on they're confident in themselves as well so and would you yeah, think they're, they're would you think they're even stronger this year? I know last year they were beaten in the final by uh, Torda Sarsfields, and that was only their first year up intermediate. Um, but do you think they're a stronger outfit this year from playing from from playing them last year and playing them this year? Yeah, I suppose like last year I think they beat us by a point as well. 
there's nothing in the intermediate championship at all. But I suppose the final last year, like Perlitz were a really, really strong outfit. And I suppose they, they won it well in the end. And I suppose Shannon Over probably didn't perform to their best ability in the final either. But they were missing Aoife as well, a crew chief injury. But yeah, no, I do think that they're stronger and they've definitely improved um, with every game. And I suppose like they've won all their games bar one and they came second in the group. So if they're going into a county final, they're happy enough. They just want to get over the line now this time and win it. And just turning to um, Naka Villa there, um, I suppose I have to put my hand up and admit that I totally um, called that semi-final wrong. Um, just going on results in the group stages, um, the fact that Naka Villa Dunaski finished first in the group and Kilowan McDonough's finished fourth, I was expecting that to be... Um, kind of, I suppose, a one-sided affair. I, I really fancied Doc Villa to win it. I was surprised that they needed extra time. Um, you know, Kilowan put up a great performance. Um, you know, you know, as Kilowan are experienced intermediate team, and I suppose uh, I, I, I shouldn't have been calling it so, so one way, but um, were you surprised that Doc Villa needed extra time to, to get over Kilowan? Yeah, I suppose when I heard the result initially, I was surprised, and I suppose a lot of people would, like, if you saw it on paper, like you said, Nakavilla came first, Kilowan came fourth. Um, but Julian, it can be hard to go into a game when you're when you're favourite. You know, mentally it can affect you. If everybody expects you to win, yeah. it can be hard to get a performance or whatever. And I suppose Killer One, like you said, are an experienced intermediate team. And they probably were like us going to semi-final, like they had absolutely nothing to lose going in as underdogs. And like when you are an underdog, you have no fear and you'll give it a hundred percent. And um, it probably was harder for Naka Villa going in as favourites but I suppose that might have given them a bit of a fright in the semi-final and I suppose they know now for the final that they really have to give it 100% and really drive on from the start um, I just have a just a quick rundown on Naka Villa's game so far this year um, the, as I mentioned there Captain Bet Ryan uh, manager Paddy Fitzgerald um, and the path to the final this year uh the big killer won 117 to 10 points. Um, they beat Newport Ballon Hinge 310 to 110. Um, they beat Shannon Rovers, a big win, 219 to 19. Um, then they beat Yee Burst Lee 14 points to 5 to get to the county semi-final, uh, which they won after extra time, 16 points to 12. So an unbeaten run to the county final. And I suppose the fact that it's only their first year up um in intermediate, is it a would you have expected them at the start of the year to do so well and to go unbeaten and qualify for a county final in the first year? Yeah, like to be honest, I wasn't surprised that they they, they reached the county final. I suppose at the start of the year, you probably would have said Shannon Rovers are there, thereabouts. And like I, like I said, the intermediate championship is tight or whatever, but like Naka Villa have won an awful amount um, underage and they've had great success. So there's a lot of those girls up playing with Naka Villa now. And um, like, like I said earlier, that they're so confident on the ball and they've had great wins throughout the championship. And I suppose they're improving um with every game as well. So like I'm not surprised to be honest that they've got to a final. And I don't know what it is, but there's some sort of pattern. When you kind of win the junior A or Cup of Junior A, you end up nearly in the end stages of intermediate the last few years um with different teams. But um no, no, they're a good team and strong team and they deserve to be in the final. Yeah, that's definitely a good point you made there because it's interesting to know it and to know it and I suppose adds to the, the excitement of the final is that, you know, in 2019, uh, Shannon Rovers beat uh, Naka Villa by a single point in the Junior A County final. Um, so they came up, obviously, they reached the intermediate final last year and now, you know, Sh or Naka Villa have come up last year and have reached the intermediate final this year. So like you said, if the very comp competitive uh, championship was six teams, Four reached the semi-finals, and you know there was uh, very interesting results and nothing between a lot of the teams or similar kind of patterns of, of results. But um, just looking at Naka Villa, then Arena Friday, I suppose, is their the key player. Uh, she recently nominated for a Camogie All Star. Um, how crucial is she to the, this Naka Villa side? Yeah, I think she's a very important player. Like you even saw Jerlyn with Tip this year, she got points from outrageous angles and distances when we really needed them. And so she'll do the same for club. She'll step up and do what she has to do. And even from playing against her this year, like she has a variety, like she can score from distance, she runs at you, she can pick out different players. Um, I just I suppose it's important for Shannon Overs that like she's a really strong player, but Nakavilla have other players that they need to keep an eye on as well. Um, because she's really good to keep to get younger girls into the game as well. 
Um, so Nakavilla would be hoping a really strong game from her at the weekend. Yeah, and what would you say would be Nakavilla's main strengths, you know, from playing against them? I suppose, like, they mix it up. Like, if not predictable, they can kind of do anything with the ball, if that makes sense. Like, as in, for being a back myself, like, they can run at you, and that's the last thing you want to see is forwards running at you left, right, and centre. And so they can switch it up. If they run up the wing, they can cross to the far corner, or, you know, if they need it, they can lob it in into the full forward line, or they can score from distance. And, like, what I notice as well, like, their backs are very strong, and they don't panic on the ball. They... They can work it out from the half back line. Like Beth Ryan is very strong centre back. Um and, and Joe Quiva McCormick as well. She was out midfield when we played them and they just carry the ball. Like you've Quiva McCarthy there that was one of the seniors, Emer Heffernan, Arena. Like there's loads of girls down the pitch and, and they're calm with the ball and they're really good to play off each other and, and really give it to the girl in the best position as well. So they have a lot of strength coming into the match as well. And then what about Shannon Rovers? Um what, who would you think, who would be their key players, would you think, on Sunday? Yeah, I've probably mentioned some of them already, but like again, like Anya Slattery, her puck outs, you know, she, like she's an all-star from 2020, puck outs are massive and she's a good shot um, stopper as well. And like Sabrina Larkin, she can play full-back, centre-back, sweeper, and she carries loads of experience coming into the game. So she'd be very strong and a good leader. And so there's Gillian McKenna midfield, um, Aoife Malachny, centre forward. Like I think her and Beth now would be a really good match if they're on each other. Um, and they have a few like, minor girls like and 16 girls. They have like Celine Guinan and the Lenan girls. And so they have loads around the field as well. And I think it'll be a really interesting game, girl. You know, I'm really looking forward to it. It'll be very competitive. Just a run down through the Shan Rovers then set up. So Captain Anya Slattery, manager Paul Darcy, a path to the final of the group games. Um, did a big win to start off, 216 to 9 points over Care. Um, then they beat Kirwan McDonough's uh, 210 to 17. Um, beat Bursley 316 to 210. Then they lost to Nakavilla uh, 219 to 19. And then they did a big win over Newport Ballon Hinch, scoring six goals, 616 to 214. And then in the county semi final, defeated Bursley 14 points to 110. Um, so that's Shan Rovers' path to the final. Um, where, where do you see this game being won or lost on Sunday? Or how do you how do you see it going? Or yeah, I suppose like both teams really need to start like a hundred percent and give it their all. And I suppose you need to take it kind of step by step, I suppose, like water break by water break. And like it's I suppose the team who can maintain it the whole way through and just dig it out and to win it. But I suppose this probably sounds cliche, but it's whatever forwards get on top. Um uh, and then I suppose the opposite of that is which backline can can curtail the forwards attacking ability and just try to slow it down. Um I do think that freeze might come into it as well. I know like when we played turnovers, Ethan Lockney got about five frees. So like freeze and discipline will, will be really important as well. Do you know what like you can go into a game and be really aggressive, but there's a kind of a fine line between giving way freeze. Like you need to be disciplined as well. Yeah. Um, you know, so um I suppose both teams have excellent free takers in Ethan Malachny and Emer Heffernan. So yeah, it could exactly. end up a bit of a shootout as well, you know. Yeah, exactly. So I suppose you can't afford to give them easy frees to put over the bar, you know. And just a final question then for you, Julianne. I suppose who who is going to win? Who who do you fancy and, and why? Putting you on the Julia, spot. That's a very tough question now because both teams are so good and so strong. And honestly, like I would not be surprised if it goes to extra time. It'll really go down to the wire. Mm. Like, like you said, like it was a point in it in the junior eight when they played each other. Um, and both teams are really good to attack and defend. And, um if I had to call it, I'd say maybe knock a villa by a point or two, but I don't know. It'll be very close. Yeah, look, we're really looking forward to it and um, I think it's going to be a really entertaining final and I think the fact that the two semi-finals were so close, you know, maybe if one team had won well and, and the other struggled, you know, you mightn't be as excited about the final, but it just shows, I think, to be fair, the top two teams have reached the final and I and just about and uh, and I think it's going to be a really close game and um, I'm expecting a cracker of a match. So thanks a million, Julianne, for uh, for coming on the show and to help us look forward to the game and to preview the game. And like I said, that's uh, the FBD Insurance Intermediate County Final, Knockville Dunnesky Kickhams versus Shannon Rovers. That game takes place on Sunday, November the 14th 
at 12 p.m. in the County Community Grounds Drag. So be sure to come along and and uh, support both clubs and and any neutrals as well. Get down to the field and watch it because I think it's going to be a really good game. Thanks a million, Julianne, for coming on the Community Report podcast. Thanks, Sterling, for having me. Thanks a million. Uh, Next up, I'm delighted to be joined by Tumi Vara and former Tiberi Senior Camogie player Louise Young uh, to, discuss, to discuss Saturday's Junior B2 County Final. Um, that game takes place uh, in the County Camogie, Gra- Camogie Grounds in Drag on Saturday, um, November 13th at 1pm, and it's Cashel and Silver Mines. Louise, you're very welcome to the show. Um, I suppose you were beaten this year by Silver Mines in the group stages and by Cashel in the county semi final. So you're familiar with both teams. Um, I, is it fair to say that the best two teams have reached the final? And, you know, how would you compare and contrast the two sides? Yeah, it's fair to say that the two um, best teams are in the county final. Silver Mines and Cashel are two very strong teams, both are deserving of the county final. Uh, we were beaten well by Silver Mines. Uh, they were ahead from the start. They dominated the game. Um, they, we didn't play well on that day. Cashel, um, the game against Cashel was different. Um, we were more up for that game. Um, we only really lost that game in the final say, quarter of the match. Um, Cashel were the better team on the day, but um, we gave a good performance. Um, but it was two matches were completely different. And what, what would you say were Cashel's main strengths then? Well, Cashel, they've um, a very young, fit team. Um, they've some good players um, like Jean Walsh and Rebecca Delahunty. Uh, Cashel are strong up front. As I said, they, in the final quarter of the match, they got ahead and it was really hard to stop them once they, once they got ahead. Um, and what about Silver Mines then? What from playing them? What, what would you say are their main strengths? The Silver Mines are very strong all over. I think um, they're well able to take their scores. Um, they are a young, fit team as well. Um, they have some very good players like Rebecca Ford and Dorsela Slattery. Uh, Joanne Nolan is back playing as well, and um, she's flying it. She's dominating the backline. Yeah, Joanne, a former Tiberi, a uh, senior intermediate, Camogie player as well. Um, is, is she, does she play, she plays in the backs because I know she used to play in goals years ago as well with Tip, but I think she's probably centre back or something. Is she with Silver Mines? She's in the back, yeah, she's flying it in the back. Um, so just looking ahead to the final on, on Saturday, um, where do you see this game being won or lost or who, who, who do you fancy to win it? But to be honest, um, I don't think there'll be much in it between both teams. Um, it'll be an exciting game. Um, I reckon maybe Silver Mines might edge it. And the, the Junior B2 competition, uh, as was a new enough competition this year for a lot of um, club second teams and, you know, for maybe clubs that are their first ever time having an adult uh, team like the Bally Bacon Grange and things like that. But, um, for the likes of you, um, I mentioned there, Louise, you've played with Tiberi down through the years, won All-Ireland Finals, and I know you won a senior county title with Tumi Vara back in 2004, and, but you were away, you haven't you haven't played Camogie in a good few years, and what made you go back playing with uh, Tumi Vara's Junior B2 team this year? I've played in eight years, Dur. Um, it- well, yeah, eight. Uh, well, it started um, earlier on in the year, say, Marie McCarthy and Maria Tynan, and she contacted a number of retired players to see um, would they come back and get a team together. So I um, decided to go back, and it was a brilliant decision. Um, it, we went back, it was a bit crack, we training once a week. Um, it was a get-together, a social get-together, kind of a break out of the house, a break away from kids. And I think that was a lot of it for many that came back. Um, I think there's over 30 children between the players and the team, like a mother's and others team. <laughs> but Very good. Um, yeah, um, it was great to go back and play with the likes of Noel Kendi and Co again. Brilliant, yeah, because there's, it was a lot of, um, I suppose, the successful Tumivara senior team down through the years that were back playing junior B2 and it was great to see you all back playing and I'm sure it was very enjoyable as well. 
but I suppose the likes of Cashel then is probably more younger players. They probably use them more as a development for, you know, for their senior team. I think they have a lot of, um, you know, under 16s and, and, and stuff like that playing. While, while the Silver Mines was a more similar to, to year age group, was it more older players or younger players on the Silver Mines team? Again, the Silver Mines had a mixture. Like there were some older players like you'd have Duran Nolan there and a few older players, but they also had some younger players on it. But Cashel had a lot of young players. Yeah. yeah. It'd just be interesting to see who wins out in the end. So uh, that's the, the Junior B2 county final that takes place on Saturday in the County Camogie Grounds in the RAG, Cashel and Silver Mines. And we wish, wish both sides the best luck and encourage you all to get down and support it. Um, Louise, thanks a million for joining us on the Camogie Report podcast to help us preview that county final. And um, no doubt we'll see you back again playing with Tumivara again next year. Perfect. Thanks, Ger. Also this weekend on Sunday morning, we have the four FPD Insurance Junior A quarterfinals. Um, all four games taking place at 11 o'clock and the first team have home venue. So the quarterfinal draw was Boerland, Dwella versus Kildangan. Holy Cross, Bally Cala versus Brian Bruce, Drummond Inch versus Ballina, and Money God versus Temple Moore. So four huge games for um, those eight junior A teams, um, all games happening on Sunday morning. So uh, keep an eye on the Tipperary Camogie Twitter for updates and scores, full-time scores in those games if we can't get to them. Uh, so a busy weekend ahead. Um, lots to look forward to. Um, we wish all clubs uh, the very best luck in their county finals. Um, next week's podcast, then we will be reviewing the junior B2 final and the intermediate um, final. And we'll also previewing the big senior county final between Clonty, Rossmore and Drummond Inch Camogie Club. So that's on next week's podcast. Um, also, you probably will have seen on social media, the brand new Tipperary Camogie 2021 Women in Sport jersey is on sale in Kieran Bergen Sports um, online shop, www.kieranbergensports.com. It is a beautiful, exclusive, uh, once off jersey, um, specially designed by Tipperary Camogie and KB Sports um, to celebrate women in sport. As you all know, the big initiative last year and um, Women in Sport 2020 campaign, but in 2021, we are still participating. We are still watching sport. We are still looking for media coverage and looking for people to come and uh, uh, support women in sport and get to matches. And um, this jersey just is a reminder of that and helps celebrate that and also celebrating FBD Insurance and um, fantastic sponsorship of the Adult and Minor Club Championships in Tipperary this year. We've had a brilliant club championship so far and long may it continue for the next few weeks um, as we wrap up all the games um so check out that jersey go to kierenbergens.com uh, uh it'll make a brilliant christmas gift uh stocking filler it's only 40 euro and uh it's an ideal gift coming up to christmas so go online and buy that jersey today and support to beret camogie and um, that's all for this week's show i hope you enjoyed it don't forget to like and subscribe and um spread the word about the Tipperary camogie report podcast <laughs>